You don't just deserve an emotionally available man, you need an emotionally available man. And here's why. Black women need emotionally available men because of intergenerational or transgenerational trauma. And ironically, in particular in the black community, the reason that we as black women struggle to find black men who are emotionally available is because of that transgenerational trauma. And for those of you out there who are wondering like what the hell is intergenerational trauma, what is transgenerational trauma, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is trauma that is passed down from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And for those of you who are wondering like is that even real, like can that even happen? it absolutely can happen. In fact, trauma can have an impact on genetics and intergenerational trauma can kind of like implant itself within our genes and be passed down from one generation to the next. And it appears in many ways, it can appear in, or it can manifest or express itself in anxiety, in autoimmune disorders and diseases, and just in a lot of insidious ways. And as black women, we, at least within this country, are really living like an intersectional experience. And when I say that, I mean that we come, or we're kind of like squeezed in between these two perspectives, these two ways of existing in the world we're women who have been historically marginalized and in many cases oppressed and we are African Americans so you already know about the marginalization and oppression on that side of the spectrum and don't get me wrong I'm not someone who likes to really play into a victim mentality but I am also not someone who likes to just close their eyes and pretend that there have not been practices, systemic practices put into place to continue the marginalization and oppression. So I'm kind of like somewhere in between. And as intersectional beings, as us black women are, it is so important to just acknowledge that we most likely are going to be carrying some sort of baggage with us. We are going to have had some sort of, whether it is explicit or implicit or indirect circumstance involving our triggers and our trauma triggers. And what I mean by that is, for instance, myself, and I can only speak for myself, I have experienced flat out explicit racism and sexism in my life in many circumstances. It's not like a one-off situation. I've experienced both of those forms of discrimination in my life. So it's kind of funny, like we are designed, like our purpose is just exploitation, but also invisibility. The point I'm getting at is that you need as a black woman an emotionally available man because you're likely carrying with you some sort of baggage. And don't get me wrong, that man should not replace a licensed mental health professional or just the work that you know that you need to do, whether or not you get a professional, if you need to do some sort of shadow work or any sort of self-improvement, that man should not replace those things. However, or I guess I should say, and at the same time, that man should not undo any of the work that that licensed mental health professional or you just uncovering and coming to terms with your own hurts, your own wounds. That man should not be undoing that work. So much of the black woman's experience has just been us being denied our existence, us being invalidated, us being made to feel as small as possible. Like we have been gaslighted out here like we're freaking kerosene lamp. And because of that, honestly, you not only just deserve, but you need for your relationship, you need for your partner to provide a safe space for you to be your full self, to feel your emotions, to problem solve, to work through some of that baggage. Another reason why black women, you need an emotionally available partner. We need emotionally available partners. We need emotionally available men. Because here's the thing, I'm just going to keep it like a buck with you all. If he is just providing you a paycheck, if all he provides you is a paycheck, then he is not your partner. He is your employer. Here's the truth. No one likes to hear it, particularly men, but here is the truth. You do not need a man. Is life easier with a man? Sometimes. 
Is life more convenient? Is it better with a man? Sometimes. Is it okay to want a man? Absolutely. It is so okay to want a partner, to want a man in your life. That is so okay. Look, I want some Joe Cole in my life and I am willing to live and die comfortably on that hill. But the reality is in the world that we currently live in, in our current society, as women, for the most part, we do have the ability to be able to take care of ourselves. And because we have this ability, this means that we have to seize this opportunity because again, we are, it's funny to say because you could argue that this is the best and worst time in history depending upon your particular circumstances. But for women as a whole within this nation, this is like one of our high points. And so you have to seize this opportunity and you have to start demanding more of the men that you allow in your lives. And you know, people, particularly men, like to say all the time that your degree, your car, your house, all of these material items will not prevent you from being lonely. But let me tell you something, you will be lonelier than you have ever been in your entire life if you enter into a relationship with an emotionally unavailable man just so you can have a little bit of a man you will be lonelier than you have ever been and not only will you be lonelier than you have ever been but you will be more insecure than you have ever been in your entire life you will constantly constantly i know i know from experience i'm not just like making this up i'm telling you from experience you will find yourself asking over and over again why won't he invest himself in me why won't he share things with me why won't he love me the way i want to be loved do i not deserve to be loved in this kind of way can this not happen for me being loved in the way that I want to be loved? Does he want to love someone else the way that I want to be loved? Does he want to give that to somebody else? Is that why he won't give that to me? So again, yes, it can be lonely with just your house and your car and your degree and all of your items, but it is not half as lonely as being with an unavailable man, a man who is emotionally unavailable to you. That is the peak of loneliness. All right, everyone, and this is teacher Amanda coming out. For those of you who don't know, I am a middle school teacher. And I will just say that for me, one of the reasons why it's so important as a woman to pursue emotionally available men is because your relationship models what a healthy relationship is should look like and i am just seeing with my students and with this up and coming generation i am seeing the impact that these healthy relationships have on our children and i am seeing young men who can freaking change tires who can start fires who can do all the things that we expect masculine men to do they can do all of those things but they can also be in communication they can be in community they can share their feelings. They can be 100% actualized human beings. And that is so important. The reason that it's so important that you stop choosing emotionally unavailable men is because not only does it not serve you, but it doesn't serve them either. It keeps them limited in their capacity and in their potential. And what I love even more about seeing this change in our young men is seeing the impact that it has on our young women. And you know what? I don't have to be explicit. I'm just going to say that you know what it's like to be a young woman. And you know what young women go through. You probably have a story. I have a story. And if you don't have a story, you probably have a friend who has a story. Or a cousin who has a story. Or a mother or grandmother or an aunt who has a story. And every time that we demand less or that we demand nothing at all from men, then we are just perpetuating that trauma. We are the ones who are passing it down. We're just keeping it going and going.